when you try and invent these characters, it's help. It's so helpful if you can put them in real towns with real regions and traditions to that region. And the more specific they are, the more real they are to you. And so uh, that's why I, I, you know, out of, you know, my subconscious popped that out, and I threw it in, you know, four books ago, and it's been in there ever since. Though I think I had it in the wrong county in one book, and. You know, I got some <laughs> screed from some offended Pima Countian who thought I was trying to destroy the economic infrastructure of Pima County. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's just, it's just this, you know, it's an unusual place to see yeah, in a book of yeah. world global, yeah. global yeah. staging here. But in any case, you, you have scenes in Illinois. But the majority of the book really does take place in Japan, right. in modern Japan, yeah. where you've got Yakuza and yeah. you've got the sun, and yeah. you have a, um, you've got Bob trying to do the right thing, yeah. take the sword, yeah. return it, yeah. and then disaster yeah. for the poor family, yeah. and then there's Bob, and that's yeah. that kind of classic moment where he could just turn and walk yeah. away. Yeah. I love the, the stuff at Narita. I have spent time at Narita Airport, yeah, and yeah. I thought you did that extremely well. Yeah, thank you. Um, but Bob says no, he's going to yeah. turn back yeah. and work this out. Now, yeah. I would like to tell you, because I, I am not a sword fighter, yeah. I'm technically challenged at all times, that in my house, yeah. where there lived two Stephen Hunter fans, yeah. I'm the one who figured out how the sword fight was going to end. You, did you get really that? Really nice. Yeah, well thank done. you. Thank you. And my husband came out with a book afterward. He said, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like the only time yeah, I yeah. have ever been able to yeah. score a technical first. I, I, I thought maybe I overplayed setting that up. Apparently but you're not. the only person who, who's got it. So you're obviously a. It's woman my, of extraordinary insight and intelligence. It's my editorial, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Yeah. But the minute yeah. I saw it, I thought, okay, it's yeah. there for a reason. Yeah. And then I got to thinking, Bob is not really going. I mean, you, you were inevitably going to give Bob yeah. some kind of a fight, you yeah. know, just as your proxy, yeah. if nothing else. And I thought, okay, what edge is Bob going to have? Yeah. And there it was. I loved it. Very well done. Yeah. Um, terrific. Yeah. Just worked out so well. Anyway, um, Going all the way back to your early training, now that we've talked about this wonderful book, what took you to Northwestern and the Medill School of Journalism? Well, my father, <laughs> what took me in was a sort of, uh, what can I say, a controlled failure. I was, when I went to New Trier, most of the bright kids went east to school. And I was uh, theoretically a bright kid, but I, uh, had a tendency not to care too much about things that didn't engage my imagination. Uh, my father was a professor at Northwestern, so it was by far the best school I could get into purely on a, you know, under the table, sub rosa, okay, Charlie, we'll do this for your kid, now get out of our hair kind of deal. You know, in terms of scores and grades, I probably didn't really uh, belong there, but they let me in because they didn't have to give me any uh, campus room because I lived at home the first year and in apartments from there on, from there on in. And at Northwestern, and the story would be wonderful if I would say, you know, and I really fl flourished at Northwestern, I blossomed, but I didn't. I did the same thing I did at Nutrier, which is sort of do very well in the courses that really uh, inflame my imagination and just sort of diddle away and barely sort of managed to survive in the classes that uh, that kept me uh, kept me out of uh, you know that almost got me flunked out. I in fact did. I, it was so mar well. Here's a funny story. At the end, I to graduate, you're supposed to have 10 credits, I think it was, in a social science. And Medill said that was your social science uh, minor. And I had declared my social science minor as anthropology. However, in when we were counting up the credit hours, I, I went to the dean, a guy named, a wonderful man named Peter Jacoby, and I said, uh, Mr. Jacoby, uh, I'm supposed to have 10 hours of, of social science, 
and I'm supposed to, it was supposed to be anthropology, and I do have 10 hours of anthropology, but two of them are D, and I don't guess that counts. So I've only really got eight hours, which means I'm not going to graduate. And he said, did you take any other social science classes? And I said, well, when I was a sophomore, I took, I think, introduction to psychology. And he says, ah, you're now the first social science major who's majored in anthropological sociology in the history of the Medellin School of Journalism. So that's how close I was to yet another humiliation and failure. I love it. Now, may I ask you, what years was your father a professor? At he Bell? was in the radio and TV film no. department. What years was oh, he there? He was there from, uh, God, from like 51 until his death in 77. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Well, uh -huh. my father. Uh -huh went to Northwestern on a scholarship to Medill. Oh, no kidding. But he was older, but my father was captain of their undefeated 1938 football uh, there team. There you go. There Unfortunately, you. undefeated until it played Notre Dame in yeah. the very last game. Yeah. But he was always very proud of the fact that he graduated from Medill, although he didn't yeah. use it um, yeah. in, in his profession. And I had wondered whether you had purposefully set out to be a journalist or whether uh, it I, just sort of happened. I wanted to be a writer. And I tried to figure out how to be a writer. And I was not active in journalism in high school. I was, quote, literary. You know, I was writing short stories and uh, and things like that. and. I was sort of looking at the way one became a writer, and by that I mean using Hemingway's definition, I write hardcover books for money. And many came from the academy, and I knew that I didn't have the patience, you know, unless I could discover a specialty like psychological anthropology. At any rate, I knew I didn't have the patience for that, and many of them seemed to come from newspapers and so I thought well yeah okay I'll do that so I was I, even in the beginning I looked as at journalism as a tool to get me somewhere else and I was not one of these newspaper freaks I didn't have black fingers I hadn't you know led the fight as the editor of the high school newspaper against the new you know the new lunchroom policy you know that wasn't that wasn't me at all I just, I don't know how, to be honest with you, I don't know how I got through that too because, because again, I mean, my pattern was if, I mean, the only thing I'm selling is the power of my imagination. And if it's not engaged, I am a truly mediocre human being. I, I just am sloppy, lazy, indifferent. I wander away. I just sort of look Gosh, up at the is sky. Gosh, this into Oprah. <laughs> That well, wasn't where I was well, going. But see, I got through it because whenever I had to write, that would engage me, and I'd always do actually shockingly well. You know, they were always amazed at what I could do as a writer. And I also learned that if you have a little bit of talent, that opens a lot of doors and people will cut a lot of corners for you. And this is, you see this with athletes all the, all the true. Well, it's also true in, in, other, in all other areas of life. And uh, so I got away with stuff that uh, uh, I think that a lesser talented runner just continues in my career as an actual journalist. Gotten away with a lot of stuff that would have destroyed people with uh, lesser talent. So I've been very lucky. What pushed you into writing your first novel? It wasn't that I, it was something I had always dreamed of. I had always wanted to do it. It was not, it was not a question of, who, of if, but when. And uh, it was the first novel I wrote, I published, was actually the third novel I wrote. Was it? Yeah, it took me seven years from the time I started uh, uh, writing novels until I finally published a novel. And it wasn't, it wasn't, heroic expression of will. It wasn't, there was nothing courageous about it. It's just that I didn't know what else to do. 